Okay, let me pick up on a couple of points and focus on those. Uh, I really have no idea what the word success means uh, given, given its use in the last few minutes. Uh, I'm an economist, that's what I do for a living. So one of the ways we measure success, it's an imperfect measure, but we use it all around the world, is economic growth, the growth in your GDP, your total output of goods and services. So I wanna compare with you uh, the freedom you get if you're no longer poverty stricken, if you have minimum wealth, healthcare, uh, welfare, health, food, shelter, clothing, uh, you're not a terribly poor person. Uh, the People's Republic of China, I'll use as an example, because they call themselves socialist. Uh, over the last 40 years uh, that they've been developing their society, uh, their annual rate of growth uh, has averaged between six and 9%, particularly over the last 25 years. Over the same period of time, the rate of economic growth of the United States has averaged between two and 3%. That is, the Chinese are growing three times faster than we are as a nation, and that's why they're the superpower in the world that you see and read about every day. Over the last 30 years, the real wage of the United States has been stagnant, growing very, very small. Over the same period of time, the real wage of the average worker in China has quadrupled. They promised their people to deliver to them an exit from the lack of freedom that goes with extreme poverty, an extreme poverty that China suffered because in the capitalist division of the world economy over the last 300 years, uh, what was left to China was the bottom of the barrel. Every Western capitalist country took a piece of China as best they could and didn't use it for the benefit of the Chinese, to put it politely. And then let me talk about freedom and the experience of socialism. The kibbutzim had a problem. Every system has problems. And for every socialism that had a difficulty, I'd be happy to give you a capitalism that did. One of the most successful corporations in the last 70 years, for those of you who, who may not be familiar, is something called the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation. It's a company in Spain. It's the seventh largest corporation in the country. It's a family of 150 to 200 worker co-ops that reject capitalism. Why? Because when you enter a capitalist enterprise, you're entering a place from which all that individual freedom you just heard about is pretty well gone. A very small number of people at the top of that enterprise tell you what to do, how to do it, where to do it, and when to do it. And if you don't like it, they'll take the job away from you. And you can go home and be unemployed and suffer through that with your family. Lots of freedom you have in a system like that. You don't go to work in a democratic space. You don't go to work in a place that recognizes your individuality. And for those of you who have ever had a real job in the world that I live in, know very well what freedom isn't when you're working on the job and allowing you to leave and go to another place of work where you'll likely be treated in the same way is hardly a solution. Socialism is the yearning for people to do better than what capitalism has in store, to provide you with an education without crippling debt, to provide you with the necessities of life without humiliating you and subordinating you. And to do that, you cannot be asked to go work in an enterprise whose whole internal structure makes a mockery of the notion of democracy. Look, it is absolutely true that it is a disgrace the rate of growth in the United States as being so pathetic. It has. And the reason for that is the lack of capitalism in this country. Uh, the fact that it is so controlled, so regulated, so much redistribution of wealth, so little role for the private sector in this country that economic growth is stilted. But to associate China's growth with socialism is bizarre. 
China grew when it liberalized whole regions of its geography, whole areas where, which were left free, free to have wage laborers, free to build corporations, free to build businesses. Alibaba is not owned by the employees, uh, although now, of course, because it's against socialism, it's being crushed by the central government. Uh, the successful businesses in China, the ones that are responsible for the economic growth, the ones that are responsible for the, for the uh, uh, exports, are all pseudo-private companies that behave like private companies in a relatively free economy. There are many businessmen in the United States who claim that in China they can do business with less regulations than they can in the United States of America. So to posit China over the last 40 years and to ignore China when it was truly socialist and where tens of millions of people died of starvation. I'll give you one short story because I think it indicates a lot, even though it's going to eat up most of my five minutes. How did China go from a position of starvation to a position in which it can actually feed its population? Well, there was a little village, a little village, and I've got its name here. If somebody asked me in the Q&A, I can pull up the name of the village. It's in my notes. This little village in 1978 decided, because they were starving, because they had communal farms, and everything was grown for the party and for the community, and there was no private property, they decided to create private property. They had a document in which they assigned different pieces of land to different families. And within a year, they were growing four or five times more than they had grown as a communal farm. And they were scared because they knew the communists would come down and they would probably shoot them all. And luckily for them, at that point, Deng Xiaoping decided to be a pragmatist and not to insist on communal farming, on socialism in farming. And he said, wait a minute, this is amazing. You mean if they divide these parts up into private property, food production goes up four to five X? Maybe we can repeat this in other villages. And slowly this idea of private property, of employees and employers, of owners, spread through China. And production of food went through the roof. A country that was starving its people was suddenly feeding them and more. So, no, China is no example. It's not an example of capitalism. It's, again, it's a mixed economy. But with the balance of some socialist elements and the growth is all happening. If you look at the numbers, the growth is all happening in the private sector. Look, the state of the world today sucks, to put it in technical terms. It's not a good situation where we just went through COVID, we went through the financial crisis. It's been a bad time for a lot of young people. The solution to that is not to go backwards in terms of economic success. The solution is to go forward. The solution is to look for a system that can enhance our lives, that can make our lives better. Better, what I mean by better? Living longer, fewer children dying, having more wealth, getting a greater education, compare the, the, the somewhat partially capitalist world with any other world, socialist or otherwise, in terms of success over the last 70 years, that is success. So we should reject today's system, but, we, but to move towards socialism is suicide. And it's unoriginal. If you wanna be a radical, if you wanna be somebody who thinks differently, who thinks outside of the box, don't be a socialist. People have been socialists the last 150 years to no avail. The veil was pretty destructive. Be a capitalist. Embrace an idea that is new, that is radical, and, and that is actually focused on individual human well-being, flourishing, freedom, happiness, success. Thank you. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe 
press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.